Right then guys, how's it going and welcome back to Your Football Predictions, the series where we try and predict all of the upcoming weekend's Premier League football. But before we get onto that, let's take a look at my predictions from last weekend. Um, I started the season pretty, pretty well, I've had a few good weeks, um, some decent prediction weeks. Um, it's all pretty much gone downhill now because I got zero correct scores last week. I got zero correct scores this week. Um, I mean, it wasn't an easy week. We had Leicester beating Leeds 4-1. We had um, Southampton beating Aston Villa 4-3. But as I say, not a great week from me. And as always, you guys did way better than me. Uh, we had loads of people who got involved. So thank you to everyone who commented on the last video. Uh, we had loads of people who got one correct score. We had about 10 people who got two correct scores, but just three people got three correct scores, and they are this week's winners. They are Anthony, Kahadka, and Ivan. So well done to all of you three. Thank you uh, for getting your comments in on the last video. Uh, the only people to get three correct scores. Uh, and as I say, I got zero. So <laughs> well done to you. Uh, remember, if you want to be shouted out in my next predictions video, which won't be until after the international break. Be sure to get your predictions down in the comments below for this weekend's Premier League matches. But as always, we will go through those games now. I keep saying every week that I prefer to post these videos on a Thursday night, but this week, like the week before, like the week before, I've put them up on the Wednesday night. And that is because, again, we have got Friday night football this week. And it's earlier than it's ever been before. We have got Brighton taking on Burnley at half five this Friday. And I always take a note of all of the predictions before the first game kicks off. So if you're watching this video, be sure to get your predictions in as soon as you can. Uh, if you are watching this video Friday night or Saturday morning, don't worry about it. Just get your predictions in for the rest of the weekend. I'll take a note of everyone's predictions before the games kick off on Friday and then again before the kickoff on Saturday. Just so that if you are watching this late, you still can get involved. But uh, the Brighton versus Burnley game Friday, as I say, half five. Um, it's it's early. I mean, if you're finishing work, literally turn the TV straight on and watch it, except for the fact that it's on box office. So you'd have to pay 15 quid. Um, anyway, Brighton are currently sitting in 16th place. Uh, five points on the board since the start of the season. Um, I think, well, Brighton have, Brighton have had it tough. They've had a lot of tough fixtures so far this season. Um, playing against Spurs was not an easy one. Um, was quite shocked at the weekend because they dropped their goalkeeper Ryan for the first time in however many years and played Sanchez in net, who actually seemed to look pretty decent. And they also dropped Mapai, um, who was basically their guy who's been getting the goals. Um, and they reckon it's an attitude problem. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether he features in this game. As for Burnley, um, I mentioned Brighton have had a tough start. I mean, it hasn't really been a great start for Burnley. Currently sat down in 20th place and just one point on the board. Um, it was made worse this weekend when they lost against Chelsea 3-0. Um, I mentioned last week I, show, I saw Sean Dyche basically talking about the season. They're just working to get to where they want to be. You've got to remember, you know, Burnley spent nothing in the transfer window. Um, and then you've got promoted sides spending 50, 60, 80 million to, like, fight in this league. Um, I am personally still quite shocked, though, because Sean Dyche does always manage to seem to make it work. But for whatever reason, this season it's not. I mean, I'd be surprised if they got relegated. But uh, they need to obviously turn things around as quick as they can. In terms of a prediction, I've, I've gone 1-0. Brighton, as I say, I think Brighton have looked pretty decent this season. I just think they've had some tough fixtures and not quite the rub of the green. Um, so I'll back them 1-0. Next up, and again on the Friday night, so two Friday night games this week, we have got 8 o'clock kickoff on Sky, and it is Southampton taking on Newcastle. So Southampton are up to 5th in the league now. Um, they're hitting some fantastic form. Um, as I keep saying, a few weeks ago, I mentioned that Che Adams, I was like, he's looking good, but he hasn't got his shooting boots on. When he, since I've said that, he's looked fantastic. Um, 
Danny Ying has got himself a goal at the weekend. Uh, Ward Prowse pulling in two um, two direct free kicks. Ings's goal was a screamer. So yeah, I mean there were what was it? There were four nil up against Villa, and then Villa got it back to three four. So you know maybe they took the foot off the gas. But something else that happened or has happened since then is it's been flagged that um, Danny Ings has got a potential injury. Uh, may not be available for this game against Newcastle United. So, as a Newcastle fan, I mean, I don't want to wish unwell on anyone, but I think if we want to have a, a chance in this one, it would be very helpful if Danny Ings didn't play. Um, as for Newcastle, 11th in the league. Um, Brucey's lucky socks seem to be working their magic once again with a 2-1 win over Everton. I'll be honest, we, we played better. We did play better. Um, it was a much more enjoyable game to watch. Having said that, um, I just think Everton were worse than we were, to be honest. I th you know what? We did play better, but I think a, a big part of that win was just the fact that Everton were not on their game uh, on that day. Um, so, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, Wilson got two goals again, so hopefully he can keep going. I've gone 1-1. One, one. Uh, based on the fact that Newcastle coming off a good win, Wilson got himself some goals. Obviously, Southampton got a fantastic win as well. But if Danny Ings doesn't play, um, I think it'll affect the, the goal scoring. Unless Ward Prowse just scores five more free kicks, you know, who knows? But maybe slightly biased, but I've gone 1 1. Moving on to the Saturday now, 12 30 on BT. So, as I say, if you are watching this video, Friday night, Saturday morning. Get your predictions in for the these weekend games. We have got Everton taking on Manchester United. So, as I mentioned, Everton lost against Newcastle at the weekend 2-1. Uh, Despite being 2-0 down, Calvert-Lewin still got a goal. He's still in form. He's still doing what he can to get the goals. But saying that, after what a fantastic start Everton have had, have actually lost their last two games in a row now. Um, they've had defensive injuries, um, the Coleman injury, Digne was obviously suspended, but I think he should be back now. Uh, but moving into this Man United game, Richarlison, I think, is suspended. Um, Rodriguez is still injured. And I just think, like, if you think of the team they started the season with for those first three, four games, where they looked so, so good, like suddenly he's not available but he he is and then he's out and, and I just think it has just rocked the boat um, and I do like Calvert-Lewin I think he's looked good he knows how to score he knows how to find the net but and I'm pretty sure I said this last week um, and no disrespect to him he's not um, Aguero he's not going to pick it up and dribble it around three players and score he needs the service and when Rodriguez has been out the service is lacking, and that's why they didn't look good against Newcastle. Um, so it'll be, it'll be tough for them in this Man U game, I think, without Richardson, um, Rodriguez. They'll have, they'll have to see what happens before the weekend. Um, Manchester United, um, I'd obviously um, been up and down this season so far. Um, it looked like they, they turned the corner when the... Um, Obviously, it was since the Spurs game, since they lost that, that game against Spurs 6-1 or whatever it was, suddenly out of nowhere, they'd won three games in a row, they'd beat PSG in the Champions League, and it was like, wow, you know, that has kick-started them into gear. Uh, and then they go to Arsenal and lose 1-0. Um, I think Arsenal probably did deserve the win, but I, I, just, I think it was, neither team looked amazing, if I'm being 100% honest. Um, obviously, Arsenal got the pen and, and Bamiyang got his goal. Um, maybe this is what Man U do. Maybe this is the thing. Maybe that loss is going to kickstart them into another great run and they're going to win a few more games. Now, they do play in the Champions League tonight, so maybe you can check out what happens in that one before making your prediction for the weekend. Um, and I have gone 2-0 to Man U. As I say, I think them losing the last game will give them a kick in the right direction coming at the Everton game. And, as I say, Newcastle beat Everton. <laughs> and we're rubbish. <laughs> um, I just think without the the resources around Calvert-Lewin, it's... Um, but you know, who knows? 
Calvert-Lewin is still great. I could well see him getting a goal, uh, but I've gone 2-1 Man U. Next up on the Saturday at 3 o'clock on BT Box Office, so you've got to pay for it again. We have got Crystal Palace taking on Leeds. So Crystal Palace currently sitting in 13th, Leeds sitting in 12th. Both lost at the weekend. Crystal Palace lost to Wolves 2-0. Leeds lost to Leicester 4-1. Um, Crystal Palace have been... As I mentioned last week, I think it was... Defensively have looked good. Um, Attacking-wise... You know, Zaha is obviously a good player. Uh, but I can't remember what game it was. Was it the Brighton game? And I think the only shot they had on target was Zaha's pen. I think they have looked better since then. Uh, but Wolves are a very good defensive side. And it didn't surprise me that they managed to shut them out. Um, playing against a lead side who are a lot more pressing on the ball. Will be slightly more open to the Crystal Palace counter attack. Uh, I mean, when Wolves are playing with five at the back, you know, it's it, they've got that many people back. You know, it's not easy for someone like Zaha or Crystal Palace to catch them out, whereas Leeds, they might have a better chance. Um, as for Leeds, I was surprised at the score against Leicester. I actually backed Leeds to win. I think they're an exciting team to watch because... Well, it's like the old Liverpool or, or whatever. It's like, I'll outscore you, you know? The, the pressing on the ball for them is fantastic. And as I say, I really do like to watch them... Um, Bamford um, has obviously been raking in the goals, but not in that Leicester game. I've got 1-1. One, one. Let me know what you think of that one down below. Next up on the Saturday, 5.30 on Sky, we have got Chelsea taking on Sheffield United. So Chelsea sitting in seventh place in the league. Um, obviously, when they started the season, they had brought in a lot of players. Um, and it was always going to take that little bit of time for everyone to adjust. Um... I don't want to jinx it, but they look good. <laughs> um, uh, Ziyech managed to um, get himself a goal and an assist at the weekend. Um, Werner has kind of, uh, since he got his two goals a few weeks ago, I think he's got like one goal or so a game in the last few. So he's obviously looking good. Um, and they've got so many options. Um, and not to mention Thiago Silva at the back as well. Um I think I saw a stat, it was like 97% passes completed at the weekend in their game. Um, so yeah, Zuma scoring as well. So Chelsea are looking good. Um, I know someone <laughs> in the comments, I think I must have mentioned the fact that when they started the season defensively, they didn't look amazing. I mean, come on, they, they conceded three to West Brom, they conceded three to Southampton. But as someone rightly said in the comments last week, they have now had four. Four clean sheets in a row, if you include the Premier League and the Champions League. And they do play in the Champions League tonight as well. So be sure to look out for that. Taking on Sheffield United, who are currently in 19th place. And like Burnley, have just one point down at the bottom of the league. Um, as I say, I mentioned it last week. I, I called it second season syndrome. You know, I don't know what it is exactly. Um, but... After what was such a good season for Sheffield United last year, um, seems to have gone this year. Um, and it's, I mean, it's virtually the same team, it's the same manager, you know, so something isn't clicking. Is it behind the scenes? We don't know. Obviously, they've gone and spent a bit of money on Brewster, uh, the young striker from Liverpool, who played at the weekend. Obviously, it wasn't going to be a great game to start playing against Man City. Um, and they did only lose 1-0 to Man City and it was a cracking goal from Kyle Walker. So if you take out that, 0-0. That's not a bad result against Man City. But for whatever reason, it, it's been tough for them. Um, and with that in mind, I've gone 3-0 Chelsea. Um, Chelsea are, fr are scoring pretty freely and Southampton are so, and Sheffield United are struggling to get the ball in the net, so let me know what you think of that. Next up on the Saturday at 8 o'clock at night on BT Box Office, we have got West Ham taking on Fulham. So, West Ham currently sitting in 14th place, um, lost 2-1 to Liverpool at the weekend, and um, I mentioned this last week, this is the week uh, West, West Ham's fixtures change. Uh, they've, they have had a tough start 
to the season. They're now taking on Fulham. They've basically got, uh, I think, of the next six or seven games, I think they play all three of the promoted sides. So they're going to be looking at this next stretch. And I think they do play Man U and Chelsea around um, the next six or seven games as well. But there's some games in there they will be looking at thinking we need to, to win. And I think playing Fulham is definitely one of them. The only downside is Antonio is injured. Uh, the man, the main man striker, um, is out. And as a, a person who plays fantasy football, I was monitoring him to maybe put him in for this game. Uh, but without him, maybe it'll be a little bit closer. Um, as for Fulham, 17th place... Uh, and got their first win on the board at the weekend when they beat West Brom. It was an important game for those two teams, two promoted sides who were desperate for the points, and they, they went and won 2-0. Um, and I always say, if someone's going to score for Fulham, it's going to be Mitro. It wasn't, but he did get two assists, so I wasn't too far off. Um, in terms of a prediction, I have gone 2-0 West Ham. I think even without Antonio, uh, West Ham can look very threatening going forward. Will Fulham be full of confidence following their win and hoping to add to that? Maybe I've been a bit harsh on Fulham there with that prediction. But with or without Antonio, West Ham know how to score goals. So I'm going to go for the 2-0 the win. Moving on to the Sunday now at 12 o'clock on Sky Box Office. We have got West Brom taking on Spurs. West Brom currently sitting in 18th place. have got three points from three draws. Still waiting to get the first win. As I say, lost against Fulham at the weekend. Um, despite having not won a game yet, uh, I think we have seen that uh, West Brom definitely know how to score goals. I mean, they got, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, the, the three they got against Chelsea. Um, they are a promoted side. It isn't going to be easy and... Taking on Spurs, unfortunately, I don't think is going to be an easy task either. Um, Spurs currently sitting in third after their win against Brighton at the weekend. Um, Spurs obviously play West Brom tonight. Tonight? What am I on? Spurs play West Brom on Sunday. But following that game in the Premier League, then go on to play Man City, Chelsea and Arsenal as the three next fixtures. So I do think Spurs will be looking at this game, I mean, not as a must win, it's so early in the season to say that, but to pick up three points in the game against West Brom may just relax them that little bit more before going into three very big games that I've no doubt they're going to want to win. But you know, if, if things don't quite work out in those big fixtures... You know, have a buffer of an extra three points from this weekend, I think will help. We also saw Bale get on the score sheet at the weekend. Uh, he won, He scored the winner against Brighton. So, not as a Spurs fan, I mean, not as a Wales fan, but just as a fan of football in the Premier League, it was nice to see Bale get his goal. Um, I have gone 3-1 Spurs. Um Obviously, Kane and Son are still scoring. I don't think they were quite as free-flowing in the Brighton game as they had been in previous games, but they're still good and they're still always looking to score goals. Uh, and they play in the uh, Europa League tomorrow night, so be sure to watch out for that as well. Next up, 2 o'clock on the Sunday, we have got Leicester taking on Wolves. Leicester, second place in the league uh, of their seven games played so far. They've won five and lost two. Um, 4-1 win over Leeds at the weekend. Vardy's getting the goals again. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago um, they had lost two games in a row and I'm pretty sure that was the two games or at least a game and a half when Vardy was out and they lost those games. As soon as Vardy's back, they're winning again. Um, every year, this well, I mean, he is another year older every year and I know he's got a bit of a hip problem, but when he's on the pitch, he scores goals. You know, it's as simple as that. Um, so, well done to a great win for Leicester at the weekend. Uh, taking on Wolves, who are in sixth place, who did start the season poorly. Um, as I mentioned, they obviously went um, and sold uh, Doherty, but Semedo's come in. They were playing Sice over on the left wing back. Um, 
he didn't play at the weekend. Uh, Kilman's come in as a centre back, so you know they have been adjusting. Uh, but they seem to have kind of got to where they want to be with a 2 0 win over Crystal Palace at the weekend. I mentioned that Jimenez, um, as much as their f- attacking flow hadn't looked great, he was always still getting the goals, but they didn't need him at the weekend because it was Podence and um, Nuri who got the goals. Um, and they all just starting to look more solid. Um, I've gone 1 <laughs> 1. I think. Wolves are good defensively. I think as good as Vardy is, I think because Wolves sit back, um, their try and tested through balls may not be quite as effective as they were against um, Leeds. I can see Vardy scoring though. That's why I've gone one. So uh, yeah, one one on that one. Next up on the Sunday at four thirty on Sky, we have got Man City taking on Liverpool. Liverpool currently sitting first in the table now. Um, Man City are sitting tenth. You know, at the start of the season, if I'd said to you, I think Liverpool will be first after seven games, you'd probably have said, yeah, I agree. If I'd said Man City will be tenth after seven games, you might have had a few questions. Um, let's start with Liverpool. So. Obviously, it's been a bit of a topsy-turvy season for them so far on the fact that Alisson was injured to start the season and after not too long, Van Dijk has got injured as well. Um, There's been a lot of talk about the fact that defensively they haven't been quite as solid, but I'm pretty sure um, compared to last season, I don't think the number of clean sheets they've kept has been actually that much different. Um, And despite the talk of Missing Van Dijk, another played Phillips at the back at the weekend. Um, young lad who I'd never even heard or seen of before. From what I watched of the game, he looked brilliant. And then in the Champions League last night, when they won 5 0, um, they had Williams at centre back. Um, again, another young lad who got himself a clean sheet. Uh, not to mention the fact that they brought Jotter in, who went and got a hat trick last night. So, you know, as much as the talk of Defensively, are they solid or are they not? Compared to last season, I'm sure at this point it's not too much different. And, you know, as I said about Leeds, you know, who can score more goals wins. I mean, when you've got the firepower of Salah, Manny, Jota, you know, who needs a defence? Um, Man City, they, see, this is the, the difference. With Man City, it's also been talked about the fact that um, Aguero, Jesus was injured and Aguero was injured. Then... Aguero was back, but then got injured again. And I'm pretty sure Jesus was back last night for their Champions League game. Because I'm sure he scored a goal. Um, so he looks like he is back now. And again, it, it's this... Players in and out. It was what I said about Chelsea. You know, at the start of the season, it's hard to just have players in and out. And same with Everton. They've had those injuries with Rodriguez. Um, Richarlison um, not in the team. You know, trying to like fit in and out constantly isn't always the easiest thing to do. And I think that's what it's been a bit like with Man City. Trying to place Sterling up front. Um, that Torres have been trying to play in a central role as well. So I'm saying two teams here are trying to adjust and adapt. Um, Liverpool are in first, Man City are in tenth. Um, I'm interested to know what you guys think about this one. As I say, I'd love for it to just be an end-to-end shootout. Um, and with that hope in mind... I've gone 2-2. Um, as I say, Liverpool are meant to be the team with defensive troubles, but from what I can tell, they look like they're doing okay. Um, and Man City, again, new centre-backs are just in a, a team as well. So, 2-2. Let me know what you think down below. And to finish off on the Sunday night, 7-15 on Sky on box office, we have got Arsenal taking on Aston Villa. So, Arsenal are sitting in ninth place after seven games of 1-4 and lost three. So I think it's fair to say it's been pretty 50-50 so far. Um, a very good win against Manchester United at the weekend. And then Bam Nian got back on the score sheet. It was a penalty, but um, I've no doubt that will have given him a little bit of confidence. I'm sure that Arsenal fans are hoping it has. Um, because they need him to be the main man who's going to be scoring some goals. I think he started the season well. But it is... Um, slowing down, faded off a little bit. And I just think Arsenal, again, under Arteta, are just trying to, to get things right. I think Mbamyang in that kind of left-hand role, cutting in, is his preferred preferred position. 
Um, and players like Partey, um, again, I haven't seen loads of this guy, but what I have seen looks good. And having a player like him who can sit in the middle and win the ball just gives the license for more of the Arsenal players to actually get forward and create some chances and score some more goals. Um, so I think it is very positive for Arsenal at the moment. Um, taking on Aston Villa, who are currently sitting in 8th place. I mean, it shows you how tight the league is because Aston Villa have gone undefeated for, was it four games in a row? Um, all of a sudden they lose the last two games and they've dropped all the way down to, wait, oh, I say all the way down, they've dropped down to 8th place. Um, I mean, no one could have predicted what a fantastic start they had and then all of a sudden, 3-0 lost to Leeds, were 4-0 down against Southampton before the they got it back to 3-4. Obviously, Jack Grealish was a big part in that fight back to 4-3, to uh, which wasn't quite enough to get a draw back out of it. I'm pretty sure two goals were in added time. Um, and I think after this Arsenal game, let, uh, the Villa games do start to, to get a little bit better for them. So if they can get through this one, maybe they can uh, start trying to push on again. Um, Arsenal play tomorrow night in the Europa League so watch out for that I have gone 1-0 Arsenal for this game and that is it guys I feel like I've talked for quite a long time in this video uh, I don't know whether you like the long videos or if you'd prefer them to be shorter so maybe you could let me know down in the comments while you're putting your predictions in as I say those are all of my predictions up there be sure to get all of your predictions for these games down in the comments below before the first game kicks off which is friday at half five so this friday at 5 25 i will go through all of your scores and make a note of all of them but i will come back on saturday before the first game kicks off on saturday which is 12 30 so at 12 25 on saturday I'll make another list of all of the extra predictions for anyone who missed the Friday night games. Um, so yeah, if you're watching this tonight, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday morning, get your predictions in. Um, it's always a lot of fun and who knows, maybe, well, you probably will get more right than me. Uh, but who knows, maybe you can get shouted out in the next video in a few weeks time after the international break. Um, Thank you all for watching. Do drop a like if you do enjoy these videos. And I know loads of you guys watch these videos but aren't actually subscribed. So if you're watching them every week but you've not subscribed yet, please do. We're getting really close to 20,000 subscribers, which would be amazing. Um, as I say, thank you for watching as always. Have a great weekend. Hope your team wins. And I'll catch you later.